I'd like to begin by certainly thanking the committee for uh, inviting me to participate in this meeting. And I'd also like to thank the John Templeton Foundation because they pay the freight. And I, um, I'm gonna present some data uh, from them in just a little bit. But before I do that, I just wanna ask you a very basic question. I bet there's not a life in this room that has not been touched by significant adversity. Am I wrong? No. So for those of us in public health, that's a really important issue. Why? Because the data show that increased exposure to stress is associated with a greater disease risk of a number of conditions. But you've got to put that in proper perspective. You've got to look at it a little more closely. Because when you do, you see something very interesting. The plain truth of the matter is, many, if not most people, who are exposed to stress don't get sick. And the answer is we muddle through somehow. And if I were to say that more scientifically, I would say that we rely on different uh, coping resources to deal, with stress, to deal with the effects of stress. Well, I think I could have spent the hour, the hour, 12, <laughs> 12 minutes. You can tell I'm used to doing this a longer, yeah, I can easily spend 12 minutes just listing all the different resources. Can't do that. I'm going to focus on just one, social support. And what I'm going to do is, is try to play out two themes. The first, and they're, they're, they're rather unique in the literature. When you look at the social support literature, it says the more assistance you receive from others, the more likely you are to cope effectively with stress. Well, I think that's just fine but I'm going to put a different spin on it. So far, it's what you get from other people. I want to turn that around and convince you that maybe providing support is good for the health of the support provider. The second thing I want to have uh, to pick on is, is a, um, a, obviously a gender or sex related thing. And, and I'm going to, you know, most people say, oh, well, women benefit more from helping. Don't bet on it. I'm going to show you that in certain social situations, men are more likely to uh, benefit uh, than women. Okay, I'm going to develop those two things by looking at three theoretical tasks. The, in, the, the, I'm going to look at providing support, but in with a very specific context, religious institutions. Second, I'll briefly outline why helping others is important in this context. And then third, I'll uh, tell you why men may be, may be more likely to benefit uh, in, in this particular context. Okay, so let me quickly set the social context here. Although it hasn't been proven conclusively, uh, the literature shows that at least the current cohort of older adults is much more deeply involved in religion than uh, younger people. And that's very consequential because there's a massive amount of data starting to pile up which says that people who are more involved in religion enjoy better health. So, so um, but, but why would giving support be more, be, be more beneficial in um, religious institutions? I think there's three reasons. Every major faith tradition in the world extols the virtue of helping people who are in need. So when you are with a group of people and you're doing with that group the spouses, they're gonna esteem you. And that's good, you know why? Because your self-esteem is gonna go up. Self-esteem is another important coping resource. Okay, the second one is a little bit different. And it's one that I had to think about for a long time, but I think it's true. When you help other people, it gives you a respite from your own difficulties. You know, and, and then I thought, wow, that's you know, really a kind of an interesting uh, issue. Um, I, I look at it this way. You push back from the table of the self and begin to think about somebody else for a while. I think that's good for you to do that. Here's, here's one way to think about that particular issue. Jonathan Haidt wrote a really great book. And in it, he talks about our day-to-day -day consciousness. And he says, you know, our day-to-day -day consciousness, and, and well, here, I'll just read you a quick quote. He says, we all live amid a whirlpool of inner chatter, much of which is negative and most of which is useless. 
And I think, you know, if you watch yourself carefully, you'll see that more times than not, there's a little bit of truth in that. So what, what happens? Well, what happens is that um, when you help other people, it blasts you out of that mind. It focuses you on something um, that's important. Third reason, helping others makes support providers more cognizant of the things that are important in their lives. You know, I think, think how it is, think, think how you are when you're in the middle of a stressor. You're really, you know, am I no good? Am I, you know, I can't deal with this. But yet this, when you help other people, it gives you the opportunity to find something that's useful. You realize that, that and you're reminded of how important you are in the lives of other people. And I think that's very important for the following reason, because it makes you feel useful and needed, and it makes you feel like your life matters. Guess what, you, guess what I think is important for older people? They want to feel useful, needed, and their lives matter. I think that's very important stuff. Here's two studies that look at giving versus providing support. And the outcome variable here is mortality. I love mortality studies. You know why? There's no question about the direction of causality, right? <laughs> So this is good stuff. And guess what both of them find? They compare giving and receiving on the odds of dying over time. Both of them come to the same conclusion. Giving is better, it lowers your mortality risk, whereas receiving has um, no effect. Let me get to the second issue I want to explore. Why might men benefit more from giving support in religious institutions. Why, what, what is it, what's going on there? Why might they benefit? And after all, you, know, you stop and think, what's the popular stereotype? We just saw in the last talk. Women are socialized to be um, nurturant and caring. Men, especially in the older generation, are socialized to be competitive and aggressive. But I think if you, reflect on this a little more deeply, this is exactly why men are more likely to benefit from helping others in religious institutions. Men don't know how to help other people. You know, it's, if you ask me, how do you give emotional support to somebody? I'd say, suck it up and get over it, <laughs> right? You know, whereas my wife, oh wow, she's really funny. I mean, she knows just what to say, the right word, you know, empathy, everything else. It's just, it truly is, uh, um, um, an, an amazing thing. Well, in religious institutions, then, they give you the encouragement to help others. You've heard me say that before. But I think more important than that, they give you structured activities that help you help other people. So, for example, Bible study groups, prayer groups, um, um, but especially the opportunity to do volunteer work. That's a big thing for older adults. You know where older adults volunteer more than any place else? The church. That's where they put in most of the time. Okay, well, that's the, the theory. Where's the beef, right? Show me some data that says there's something in all of this. Well, this is a study I did in 2015, landmark spirituality health service. Adults 18 and older, 3,010 people, and we um, took, um, at the end of it, we got some blood samples. And this was my first Fourier into biomarkers. It was, what a trip. And, and I'm, still, I'm still learning. I'm still, yeah, I'm a novice. I'm a rank amateur. But I thought, now's the time. Got to talk the talk here. And, and um, so we took blood samples. And one of the things we, we measured was cholesterol. So the outcome in, the data analysis I'm going to show you in just a second is um, a measure of total cholesterol minus HDL, good cholesterol. And that's assumed to be what's left then is like bad, bad cholesterol. Okay, I focused on stress was an ongoing economic problem. A measure of receiving and giving social support was emotional support. And what I looked at was a three-way statistical interaction between them. And I should emphasize that I conducted these analyses just for this meeting. 
and they hadn't been peer reviewed. So take it with a grain of salt. Okay, here's what the data show. Let me cut right to the chain. Women give and receive more social support than men. We know that in the church. That's, that's, that's nothing new. But helping others offsets the, the, the effects of financial strain, and I'm going up now, uh, on cholesterol, but only among men and not among women. And, and, and receiving support doesn't have any, any effects when you put it in there with, with giving. So I decided to push these analyses just a little bit further. Now we had some questions. We said, how much support do you give to people outside your church who are not members of your congregation? And, and, and the difference that men enjoy inside church disappears. So what that tells me is perhaps there's something unique about what's going on in those um, religious institutions. Um, oh, second thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, here we go. Um, I want to see if there's age differences in the data, right? We always got to look for age differences, don't we? Well, that gets a little dicey, and here's why. I've got a three-way interaction effect, gender, financial strain, cholesterol, yeah, uh, social support. This is gonna make it a four-way interaction. That is, nah, that just don't work. You know, it just doesn't happen. Um, um, I think what happens for those of you who are statistically inclined is you have to include all the lower participants. There's a boatload of them. They're very highly in so I, I'm just going to say that um, I don't think there's age differences in the data, but uh, trying to find it is going to be very tough. Okay, wrap it up. Um, I was going to say this is a, a standard problem in gerontology. We always look for differences, but age differences, and we need to look for age similarity. Right? Here we go. Take home messages. Giving support may be even more important than receiving it. The study of gender difference in the express process, don't forget about men, right? Don't bring the guys back in. A lot of this stuff that I see in the social and behavioral sciences is geared towards women, women's issues. I get a hot flash for you, men have issues too, right? And, and we need to think about those in greater detail. That's it, that's all you get out of me for 12, 12 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>